to order the Board of Zoning Appeals. If you'll stand, please stand for the pledge. Jerry Sarte, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Call roll, please. Gary Farley. Here. Joe Crow. Here. Gary Sartain. Here. Joe Machado. Here. Michael Rather. Here. Jared Barrett. Here. Zane Cantor. Present. You have the minutes of our last meeting in front of you. Are there any changes or corrections to those minutes? Have a motion that be approved. We have a second. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. The minutes are approved. We have a uh, number of items that we will be looking at today. Those of you here for the public hearing, after our staff presents each one of the items, we'll ask also those of you who are representing these requests, uh, there may be some questions that we need to clarify. We'd ask you to come to the podium if it's necessary. Now, when we come to the public hearing, please let me know that you wish to speak on the public hearings. Uh, I don't want to overlook anyone. If you make the time to come up here, we want to make sure that we do recognize you. So either yell out or raise your hand or something because some of these I move along pretty quick, but we'll, uh, we'll let you uh, have all of the time you need for the public hearing. We do ask that you uh, try to keep your comments within the three minute range. We have a, a number of uh, fireworks that we'll be looking at, and I'm going to ask the staff to go through and make a presentation on each one of those, each one of the fireworks, and then we'll go back and have a public hearing on each one, and if there are any questions at that time, we'd bring up those issues. So if you'll go ahead with the fireworks. Okay, I'll go over the first one since there's two different applicants. Application, oh, did you want to hold on the minutes? Okay. Application BZA 2015-16 involves the property located at 6137 Epps Mill Road. The applicant is TNT Fireworks. It's a 9.5 acre site that's developed with a, a truck stop, gas station, restaurants, um, and it's located at the corner, corner of Forbes Drive and Epps Mill Road. TNT Fireworks has been located at this site for many years and without incident. We've not received any complaints regarding the operation of the tent from this particular site. And they are seeking to erect their tent um, for the period before July 4th, June 21st through July 5th. Um, they'll have a couple employees and the tent will be 20 by 60 and we have received we've not received any phone calls regarding this particular application uh, this is the site plan showing the approximate location of the tent and that is where they have been located for the past uh, six years at least six years uh, and that concludes our presentation Well, we have a different applicant now, so I'll go over. Application 2015-17 involves the property at 5975 Lebanon Pike. Uh, the applicant's name is Absolute Fireworks, and this site is developed as a commercial strip center with a Dollar General store. Um, it's 2.84 acres. They have been located at the site for several years without incident. They locate in the, the parking lot of the Dollar General. And uh, they would like to erect their tent June 20th through July 4th. And that's the location of the tent. We have not received any phone calls regarding this request. 
The next application, application 2015-18, involves the property at 2706 Las Casas Pike. They are seeking a special exception approval for a fireworks stand in the commercial services zone. The site is developed as a Dollar General and an, a hair salon. The site's 2.7 acres. They have located here uh, for the past three years and without incident. And they would like to place their tent um, on the site this year for the temporary sale. We have not received any calls regarding this application. Application 2015-19 involves the property located at 6121 Highway 99. The site is 1.93 acres. It's zoned commercial services, and it's developed as a Dollar General store, Subway, and a, a beer store. And they would absolute would like to locate their tent um, on this particular site. This is the first time that this site has been requested by Absolute Fireworks. Uh, we've not received any phone calls regarding this request. They operated a site uh, up the road at Armstrong Valley, which is no longer in the unincorporated areas of the county. The next application, 2015-20, involves the property located at 9243 Old Nashville Highway. They are seeking um, approval for the fireworks tent for property in the commercial neighborhood district. The site is 15 acres. It's vacant. They've used this site for multiple years without incident or complaints. We've not received any phone calls regarding this particular application. The last fireworks application, 2015-21, involves the property at 3892 Shelbyville Pike. It's an 8.05-acre site that's zoned commercial services. Absolute Fireworks has located their tent here for the last three to four years. We've not had any issues with the operation of the fireworks tent from this site. We've not received phone calls regarding this particular site. or the request and Bob once we posted the sign. And that concludes our presentation. All right, thank you. Um, do we have anyone here representing TNT Fireworks? If you stand up, okay. Do we have any questions from the board for this application? Thank you, you may be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. We have a motion on it. Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Thank you. Call roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Joe Crow. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Gary Sartain. Yes. Saint Cantrell. Yes. Passes. We have. Uh, Five applications now for uh, Absolute Fireworks. Do we have someone here representing Absolute? Okay, thank you. Do we have any? Now the first one, we'll take them in line. The first one is at uh, 5975 Lebanon Pike. Do we have any questions? Okay, we'll, call, we'll open the pub, public hearing on this side. Do we have anyone here who would like to speak on the public hearing? Close the public hearing, do we have a motion on it? Move be approved, Mr. Chairman. I have a second. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Joe Crow. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Saint Cantrell. Yes. The next item is at 2706 Las Casas Pike, and um, do we have any questions on this site? We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this. Close the public hearing. I move to approve. Have a motion to be approved. We have a second. Second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Joe Crow. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. 
Barry Sartain. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. The next one is at 6121 Highway 99. Uh, do you have any questions on this one? We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on it. Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to be approved. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Joe Crowell? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Gary Sartain? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. The Gary. next site is in 9243 Old Nashville Highway. Do you have any questions on this site? We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion on it? I move to approve. I have a motion to be approved. Second. I have a second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Joe Crowell? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Gary Sartain? Yes. Dane Cantrell? Yes. Motion and the last last site is at 3892 Shebbeville Pike. Do you have any questions on this site? Just point out to those who may wonder about this, these are short-term operations the last two to three weeks and uh, most of these sites have uh, been there for years, for a number of years. Do we have a motion? Double open this, I'm sorry, open this for a public hearing. <laughs> uh, close the public hearing without motion on it. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion to be approved. I second it, Mr. Chairman. Second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Joe Crowell? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Dane Cantrell? Motion carries. Okay, the next item we have is a request by Jeff Kemp, who is requesting the uh, a temporary special exemption for a barrel pit. What do you have on that, please? Thank you, Chairman Kentrell. Application 2015-22 involves the property located at 487 Rucker Road. It's a request for temporary special exception approval for a burrow pit with relief from the setback requirements for burrow pits in the RM zone. The site is 5.28 acres, and the applicant, Mr. Camp, would like to um, extract approximately one acre of dirt to create a pond on his property. Uh, he has recently constructed a home on the property, and for aesthetic purposes, he would like to have a pond. However, it is his desire to remove the soil from the site, and because of that, he will be required to obtain a, a temporary special exception for the borough pit from you. It was discovered that the work had commenced, and, and once the applicant was notified that they would need special approval for this, uh, he came in and applied and he has submitted uh, the letter of credit that is uh, typically required for this. He will also have to meet all the requirements of the engineering staff, and they are here to answer any questions. Uh, this is the pond that exists on the property. Um, he would like to continue and, and just finish the pond uh, by once he receives approval. These are surrounding homes. We have received a couple calls, and. Uh, inquiring about the request, but there was were no indications that anyone was against the the application. Uh, he does need relief from the setback requirements. We do require a 150 foot setback for burrow pits. However, the site itself only is uh, approximately 150 feet wide, so uh, he will need relief from that standard. And that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request? If you'll come around to the podium, please. If you'll give us your name and any additional information you want to share with the board. Uh, Jeff Camp is my name. I own the property. Do we have any questions? Joe? I got a question for you. Uh, you gonna have a fence around this pond, uh, small as your property is there uh, eventually you will have neighbors both sides of you I have I have not decided to do that yet but it's something we can consider. probably have some liability there I'm not sure myself but 
kid maybe get in or whatever. Thank you. Gary. How long do you think it's going to take you to get uh, get it finished? Get it finished? Probably two weeks if we can get some dry weather. But we've got plenty of dry weather. Yeah, <laughs> till this weekend. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. you. May be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, uh, none of us know what the weather is going to do here, but uh, I'd vote for approval. Give him three months, so make sure he gets the weather and everything. He doesn't have to come back before us. If that's okay. So you're making a motion to be approved for three months. Okay. Second. Have a second. Any questions? Did we have a public hearing on this? We did, didn't we? <laughs> uh, call the roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Joe Crow? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Did we have a public hearing? Did you open it for a public hearing? Pardon? Did you open it for a public hearing? I thought I did. I wouldn't. I'm not sure. Okay. Did he? Okay. I did. Yeah. I'm thinking fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> did you vote, Joe? Okay. Gary Sartain? Yes. Ben Cantrell? Yes. Motion carries. Hey, thank you. The next item we have is a request by William Daniels, and he's asking for variance relief for a fence measuring six foot in height. What do you have on that, please? Thank you, Cam Chairman Cantrell. Application 2015-23 involves a property located at 4579 Barfield Crescent Road. They are seeking variance relief to allow a four fence measuring six feet in height, which extends past the principal building along the property ba boundary abutting a street right away on the property located in the RM zone. The Subject property is a corner lot which fronts both Barfield Crescent and Brickell Drive. It's a 0.47 acre parcel. Mr. and Mrs. Daniels would like to uh, place a fence along that second uh, frontage along Brickell Drive that extends past the principal structure um, but measures six feet in height. The provisions in a Chapter 11 of the Zoning Ordinance limits fences that extend past the front of the principal structure uh, to four feet in height. And being on the corner lot, the applicant desires uh, additional privacy, and therefore they are seeking a request to allow them to have the, the fence along Brickle Drive um, extend past their structure by six feet and measure six feet in height. We have received uh, a couple informational calls regarding this particular request, but no one has indicated whether or not they are in favor or opposition. This is uh, the, the structure in question for which they would like to extend the fence into the front yard um, just by six feet to go towards the back of their property line to capture a little more area. Um, this is along Barfield Crescent. There's a four-foot fence that looks like uh, was erected by the developer along the front of the subdivision. Uh, they're located right at the corner of Barfield Crescent and Brickell Drive. And these are just photos of surrounding properties, the other properties located in the subdivision. This is the back of the property and the applicant. I have some photos that were supplied by the applicant to show the reasoning uh, b behind their request. Um, it just shows how exposed the, the back of their, their backyard is. Uh, this is the adjacent property that also fronts Brickle Drive, who um, has a fence, but they've uh, placed it behind the principal structure, so it does not extend into the front yard. And these are additional properties along Brickle Drive. We posted the sign on the property. 
The applicant indicates that uh, to install the fence flush with the principal structure would um, collide with underground utilities or there that are existing and would uh, potentially create an unsafe um, situation during installation. Um, as you can see, this is the, the site plan that the applicant shows and hopefully you can see the boundary. You can see that if they had um, just placed it flushed with uh, the principal structure, it could be six feet. I mean, yes, but because they jut out past the front of the structure, it, um, it requires a variance to go six feet. You'll see the example of the type of fencing that the applica applicant wishes to install. And this is a photo that was supplied by the applicant and just to give you an idea of how exposed um, they, they feel that their backyard is. We found that they did not meet all, all of the criteria, but most of the criteria for variance. And that concludes our presentation. And just to remind everyone, the reason this is before us is because it does jut out in front of the house, a small, how many feet is that? Six feet. Six feet out in front of the house, then you've got to get a variance for it. Do we have anyone here representing this request? If you'll come around the podium, please. Oh, and I also passed the letter that was supplied by the applicant during um, our, our meeting, so you can have some additional explanation. Uh, give Daniels. us your name and any additional information. Uh, William Daniels, um, we, we would try to stick to the, the ordinance, um, but with the utilities, the way they are, the underground utilities, looking at it, there's no way to get the post to where they can clear by more than enough to be safe. It would, it would scare me to try to dig right there. Um, just requesting the bare minimum to get us a better angle to before we go to the back of the yard. Uh, main reason for the six foot height, um, we've already had one theft from our property. And if you when you pull on to Brickle Drive or drive down Barfield Crescent, I mean, everybody's natural reaction is to look at what you're doing, about what you have in your backyard. It's just a very exposed area and I hope to seek y'all's approval. Any questions from the board? Thank you. you. May be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak. Close the public hearing. We have a motion on. It. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion to be approved. We I'll have second a, it. Have a second. Call the roll, please. Mary Farley. Yes. Joe Crow. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Dean Cantrell. Yes. Motion carries. The next item we have is a request by Kevin Ritter, who is requesting a major home business and this special exemption, cabinet shop. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2015-24 involves the property located at 2150 Newcastle Road. They are seeking special exception approval, allowing the establishment of a major home-based business involving a cabinetry shop with relief from the standards for major home-based businesses relating the sign placement. This property is located in the RM medium density zoning district. The subject site is 5.91 acres and uh, the applicant would like to construct a 3,200 square foot workshop to um, operate his kitchen cabinetry business from. Uh, the applicant proposes in their application uh, that they will not have additional employees. It could be uh, the rare occasion that they may have to employ, employ one additional employee. They only work on about 12 kitchens per year. It appears that the traffic that's generated by this major home-based business would um, fall well within the limitations that major home-based businesses are allowed. Uh, the only um, things that would cause it to come before you guys are the 3,200 square foot construction of the workshop, as well as the applicant would like to have a small sign at their entryway simply because the site's heavily vegetated and customers who would like to come on uh, site to check the progress of uh, the work would easily be able to uh, find the, the location. It's just vegetated. The, proposed structure would be approximately 500 feet off of the right-of-way and there's vegetation surrounding the entire site. 
uh, th these are the surrounding properties. As you can see, it's mostly farm, pasture land, um, very rural in nature. We've received one informational call regarding this request, but no one has indicated that uh, they were opposed to the request or in favor. Uh, the building shown in red is the proposed workshop that will be constructed if the board approves the request. Staff found uh, that it met uh, all of the criteria for the home-based business with the exception of the fact that this applicant would like the sign at the entry uh, at the end of the driveway uh, because the five square foot sign would not be visible if placed on the structure for customers. So that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request to come around? Give us your name and any additional information you might have. Thank you. I'm Ted Goodman of Murphy and Murphy Attorneys. We represent uh, Mr. Ritter in this application for special exception. Uh, next slide, please. This is at the home of Caroline and Kevin Ritter, which is 5.91 acres on Newcastle Road, directly across the street from Williamson County. Next slide, please. Uh, it's a request for special exception for a major home-based business, small custom kitchen cabinetry business, known as Timeless Kitchen Cabinetry. It is uh, also a request to build a 3,200-square-foot workshop and we're requesting authorization to use the entire workshop building uh, for the major home base business. The proposed building will be of a type, size, and character that is commonly associated with residential and agricultural uses. Next slide. Also, uh, as Ms. Glauner mentioned, we're requesting uh, permission to place a small 18 inch by 24 inch sign at the end of the driveway uh, because due to the layout of the lot and the trees, the proposed building is not visible from the street, so therefore a sign attached to the building would not be visible. Uh, if we couldn't, a, a sign really of, of any size, a, a smaller sign would also uh, make Mr. Ritter uh, very happy. And um, we'd request also not to be required to provide additional parking due to the small scale of the operation. And if the variance is not approved, of course, we'd still request approval of a special exception. Next slide. This is a uh, site plan. This is Newcastle Road. This is Williamson County. This is the Ritter property line. This is Mr. Ritter's home. And this is the proposed structure. Next slide. This is just an example of the type of building Mr. Ritter would like to build. Next slide. Uh, this is a very small scale operation. Mr. Ritter's been in business about nine, about 10 years, nine years in Pennsylvania, one year here in Rutherford County. During nearly all of that time, it's been a one man shop, just Mr. Ritter. Uh, he currently is just Mr. Ritter and has no employees at the time. He's never had more than one employee at any one time. He builds about 12 kitchens a year. Next slide. Deliveries are by vans or small box trucks. The kitchens are shipped out in small box trucks. About 10 to 15 potential customers a year visit the shop. Uh, customers may visit from time to time to discuss the work in progress, but only one customer family is present at a time, and all meetings are by appointment only. Next slide. This is an example of one of the kitchens that Mr. Ritter has built just so you can get an idea of the quality of his workmanship. Next slide. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ritter states that the property is very well buffered by vegetation and by distance, that the proposed building would not be visible from any public road, that it's about 500 feet from the nearest home, that that home is densely, uh, is further buffered by about a 90 foot strip of a densely wooded area. and. Uh, that the north side of the proposed building is screened by a row of oak trees and the back side backs up to a large hay field. Next slide. This is the Ritter property viewed from Newcastle Road. That's the Ritter property. This is Newcastle Road. And then this is the uh, Ritter's driveway. Next slide. This is looking from where the proposed building would be uh, at the densely wooded area that screens the nearest home 500 feet away. Next slide. Uh, 
Due to the small scale of the operation, it would have little, if any, impact on the surrounding area. Mr. Ritter's tools are not industrial. They're of a size and scope to that that you would find in many home workshops. And he uses his own personal pickup truck as his only vehicle, uh, only business vehicle. Next slide. He finishes his cabinets with a water-based, environmentally friendly uh, finish, uh, clear coat, and it is a, uh, he, is a, he plans to have a dedicated finishing room with a separate filtered ventilation system. So therefore, no odors, dust, vibration, or noises should be discernible at the property lines. Next slide. In addition, the characteristics of the building itself will provide increased buffering. It will be a heated and air conditioned building. It will be very well insulated, which will provide additional uh, sound dampening. Mr. Ritter will keep all doors and windows closed except during active ingress and egress. He has to do that to keep the humidity and temperature levels stable in order to prevent damage to the woods that he uses to build the, cus the custom cabinets. And he'll have a central dust collection system and all of its motors and other components will be located entirely within the building to prevent noise. Next slide. So we would request that you approve the special exception and also request approval of the uh, variances that we've requested. Uh, Mr. Ritter and I are here to answer any questions that the board may have. And this is an example of another kitchen Mr. Ritter has built. Do we have any questions of the counselor? I got a question for Danielle. How about fire protection? How, how, where does he stand on that? You know, sprinkler system or fire hydrant close to the business or what? You know, we're always the businesses. I think, pardon me? You know, in the well, past. Well, I mean, he's, he's 50 feet uh, from the rear property line, 80 feet from the other. He's probably more than 100 feet from his structure. Um, I believe that he will have fire extinguishers on the, the property according to what his application. Mr. 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 Ritter is planning to have at least two fire extinguishers in every room, and he can certainly add more fire extinguishers if that's... Uh, if that's something that the board would, would recommend. Any other questions? I have one. Are these cabinets, these two pictures I've looked at, are those painted or stained? Does, does he paint and or stain? Mr. Ritter, are they painted or stained? They're all painted, painted milk paint finish. Use a what? A milk paint milk paint finish. So they're they're spray, you're spray painting these cabinets. Okay. The clear coat is sprayed. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. you. May be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. We have a motion on it. I move to approve it. I have a motion to be approved. I second it. Have a second. Call a roll, please. Harry Farley? Yes. Joe Crow? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Dane Cantrell? Yes. Harry Next Sartain. item is uh, Jose Gamino, and uh, this is a special exemption for uh, accessory structure before the principal structure is being built. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2015-25 involves the property located at 4092 High Ship Road. Uh, they are seeking special exception approval for the establishment of an accessory structure before the principal structure for a property located in the RL Low Density Residential District. Um, the site is 5.5 acres and the applicant uh, would, has constructed a building towards the back of the property for his personal use and not associated with uh, agricultural functions. Uh, the applicant was notified by an inspector that they would need to obtain proper approval for the structure. And Mr. Gamino came in and immediately applied uh, for his uh, request to con for the 600 square foot storage barn. It also has a 16 by 30 shed roof along the side. It is his intentions to construct his house in the near future. However, he would like to continue to use the structure on the property as his family likes to go out and, and 
play on the property during the weekends. Um, we have received a couple calls from uh, people inquiring as to what the request was for, and we've actually received uh, two uh, calls in support of, of Mr. Gamino's request from the, the surrounding neighbors. This is the site and the surrounding area. Uh, this is, you can see the structure is well off of the, the road. He has it uh, secured by an entry gate. That's the approximate location of the structure. And that concludes our presentation. We have anyone here representing this request. If you'll come around, please, to the podium. Give us your name and any additional information you'd like to share. Yes, I'm Jose Gamino, and I'm the one the place. Okay, any questions? Are you going to be staying overnight at any time in this structure while... Uh, Sorry? Are you going to be staying overnight at any time during the... Uh, no. So that you won't be living in the structure? No, sir. Storage only? Storage only. I got a, I got a, far, a tractor, and I got a lawnmower, and a couple tools. So we come over like a weekends, like a Saturday and Sunday. We spend a day with the family. Uh, you know, sometimes we live in around eight, nine o'clock. My kids play around, you know. Uh, I do some, I make the, I build that thing because I mean, uh, to keep all my stuff, like uh, chairs or tables that we got for a picnic, whatever. So there, yeah. there will never be any overnight stay there? No. Any other questions? you have any idea how long before you build your home there? Uh, say probably a year. We got a home in, over here in Murfreesboro. We tried to get some more equity in the home, sell it, and then probably build a house in, i say maybe a year, two years. If we not, we just sold the place, whatever. Any other questions? Thank you, you may be seated. Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. If you'd like to speak, come to the podium. <laughs> Can't let you sit back there. Yeah, it's hard hearing folks in here. Mr. Gamino. Is Give us your here. name. and I'm Casey Vaughn. I'm directly across the street. There's more neighbors here in support of Mr. Gamino. He's done nothing but clean and bring his property value up since he arrived. He has a nice home in town. He does plan to sell. Uh, he's got nothing but neighborhood support. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Anyone else? Close the public hearing if we have a motion on this. I make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion to be approved. We I'll have second. a second. I'll second. I'll second. Second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Joe Crowell? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Thank Cantrell. Yes. Do we have any further business that needs to come before this great board while we're in session? Close the public hearing. Close the board meeting. We are adjourned.